Happy New Year, Renegade Nation! Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Betas Bandicoot, Bash Fetchum, Crystal Gomez, Chris, Oliver Odegaard, James Butterworth, Amar Shika, Rogelio Gomez, Sean Delaney, Jessica Bogus, Dan Robin, Liam, Farron Chowdhury, Harris, Biggest Dickus, Monty Python fan I see, Trentix, Jawad Krebs, Ju Chin, Good Christian Boy, Lindsay Johnson, Jordan Kirk, Hanolex, Banana Peel, Devon, Fathalo, Lit, Thomas Mollett, Elite Leaks, and Moisty Justice. And I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, click the join button right down beside the subscribe button down below. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Hmm. Wait too long. Get her <laughs> 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 I didn't know you could do that. Damn it. Got owned by a guy named Duke. <laughs> This dude, this dude right here, is this Colonel Sanders? Yes. A strange time in my life was when I was in high school. I think that's true for most people as they left high school. Anyway, um, my whole thing with uh, f the movies that I was into back then was kind of weird. Because me, I liked Daredevil, the Ben Affleck Daredevil. Yes, you heard right. When I was younger, and the older I got, the more I realized, you know, this actually is not a good movie. Like, at all. This is actually kind of shit. And there's part of me that still likes that, but eh, there's also there's also the, you know, the skeptic in me that's just like, yeah, it was just... They did not know what the hell to do. And now, um, at that time, and then also at that time, uh, Disney rides becoming uh, movies, I, it, I think it started years and years ago, but it really hit the big time whenever Pirates of the Caribbean was made into, into a film. And it blew up. It, you know, $600 million at the box office against a budget that was like, uh, you know, it was a fairly large budget, but by comparison to how much money it made, it was astronomical. And then more and more of them came out, and it only got more and more popular. And then, you know, the fourth and fifth ones came out, and they were sort of like, the fourth one tried to go in a different direction, but then everyone was just like, this is stupid. And then the fifth one's like, okay, we're going to take it on this direction. And they're like, okay, let's make a sixth one. Oh, crap, Johnny Depp's in hot water because of uh, uh, allegations over him and Amber Heard. Oh, I guess we better fire him and steal the steal the franchise from, or, and take him out of the franchise. And, yeah, Disney didn't wait. Disney and their impatience is actually, they're actually kind of famous for it now. Because they refuse to be patient for James Gunn. Uh, whenever allegations about him came out, and then they were just like, oh, this is like almost 10 years ago. Wow. I can't believe we tried to hold him responsible. Hey, James, you want to make uh, Ga Guardians of the Galaxy 3 now? He's like, oh, no, in a minute. I need to finish uh, making Suicide Squad for Warner Brothers. It's like, but James, we're going to give you all this money. He's like, in a minute. And now they've waited and waited, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is... I think in officially in production now, even with the whole COVID thing. Uh, but Johnny Depp is still out, and not only that, but now he's also out of the Harry Potter, or not Harry Potter, but the uh, uh, Fantastic Beasts franchise. He is no longer Grindelwald, which <sighs> that sucks. But you know, no, that just sucks. Look. People being people need to be held responsible for their actions. I get that. But honestly, if you're going to maintain this double standard as to 
who is held responsible and who is not held responsible, I'm sorry. I am not going to take you seriously. Warner Brothers, I cannot take you seriously. I cannot take any studio out there seriously if this is the kind of treatment that they... And, and here's the thing. I know no one's going to pay attention, and I know this is going to get silenced because, in all honesty, you know, I, apparently Amber Heard can do no wrong, even though it's been proven time and time and time again. She is a legit nutcase when it comes to certain things. Oh, and also that, uh, on the point, I know Johnny Depp's not a perfect person. I know this. I accept this. But is he guilty of all the stuff that... Uh, Oh, God. There is a war going on in our, uh... Whew, there is a war going on in our, uh... Patreon right now. Good Lord. I, I'm gonna have to silence... Actually, you know what? I, I'm gonna go ahead and silence my phone because I know that's going to keep popping up. But, yeah, the fact that Johnny Depp is no longer involved uh, in that... St in the Pirates franchise at this as of this moment irks me to no end. Oh, but back on my main point, they tried so hard to make these attractions into films. They tried to market them in a way and make them in, sort of into franchises. And Country Bears was one that came out, and I was, I was intrigued, but because I'd seen the Country Bears thing before back when I was a kid, but I never wanted to watch that film but when I found out that Christopher Walken was in it I'm like oh you know what I'll give this a shot and I made it about 25 minutes in before I effectively just wanted to like like ram my head through the wall just to get out of that room that I was in and uh yeah I never I never watched Country Bears again so what better way to celebrate this than to see Doug Walker take it on in one of his reviews so this is the Nostalgia Critic, The Country Bears. Son of a bitch. This episode brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. A great hey, shave at a great price. Dollar Shave Club. delivered right to your I home. need that. No, I don't. I like my beard. Although I did shave my head here recently, which was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will you just let me watch it? Oh, for God's sake! Hey, Critic, what's up? <sighs> Nothing, I'm just trying to watch Country Bears. Are you sure you mean Country Bears? Yes! The Disney ride? Yes! Why? Oh, for God's sake, it's gonna go on and on and on and on! Hey, 911. Yeah, there's no way that this can't be an emergency. Okay. Na, 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 na. so you don't have to. Today's movie has a bit of a reputation. You don't say. Kind of like Disney has had over certain periods of time. Through the constant ups and downs, Disney has always found some niche to creatively exploit in that you need little creativity to exploit it. Oh. They directed DVD sequels, kid rock stars, and it turns out even then they were trying too hard as all they had to do was re-release their animated movies with the lines erased. Well, at this creatively bankrupt point in their lives, they were really big into turning their rides into movies. They had a big hit with Pirates of the Caribbean, a big miss with the Haunted Mansion. Ugh. But all of this began with Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The Haunted Mansion, I will... You see, here's the thing. They marketed that film terribly. The film was bad as, was, as it was, but they marketed that film terribly. Because back in the day, uh, this was, yeah, way back in the 2000s. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, for you young whippersnappers out there, that's quite some time ago. But for me, it feels like yesterday. I remembered... Um, I don't know why I was... Like, I was flipping through late night TV. And all of a sudden, uh, Jimmy Kimmel was on. 
and I was, and this was right after Jimmy Kimmel was off the Man Show, and I flipped it over to that, and then all of a sudden, I see, uh, I see Jennifer Tilly, who played the, uh, who played uh, the woman inside of the Crystal Ball, the fortune teller, and the entire time that she was on there, you know, uh, Jennifer Tilly, you know, I, I don't know what she looks like now, but back then, dude, she was, whew, smoking hot. But anyway, uh, the whole thing was. She was on there, and Jimmy was uh, sitting there, and he had his hand like this, and then, uh, and then, this was when Jimmy Kimmel was still trying to be that man, you know, man show Jimmy Kimmel before he eventually evolved into, you know, catchphrase muttering Jimmy Kimmel, who eventually became a mouthpiece for late night television. What you know, it, exactly it, it, mm. and Jimmy Kimmel. Literally, this was a kids movie, by the way. So kids may have been watching this, like, oh, that's going to be about the Haunted Mansion. And Jimmy Kimmel leans over, and uh, Jennifer Tilly's like, she's like, Jimmy, Jimmy, are, are you sure you're maintaining eye contact? And he's just like, I'm sorry, Jenny, Jennifer, but I just can't stop staring at your breasts. And yeah, Jennifer Tilly, yeah, again, you know, very attractive woman. But still, come on, man, have some respect. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, she's a very, very attractive woman, but... I know Conan O'Brien also got caught sneaking a peek one time. Uh, I believe it was uh, for Nicole Scherzinger, uh, the former lead singer of the Pussycat Dolls. But, yeah. It... <sighs> we get caught. What can I say? Wandering eyes. I've caught several women doing that, too. Good Lord. Especially when it comes to, like, so Like, for instance, my brother, Ethan, who does not have to work out at all, has a six-pack and everything... Whenever he goes to, whenever, like, me and him used to go to the pool back when we were in high school, uh, you know, I would stand there and have my t-shirt on and everything. Ethan would take his t-shirt off, or take his, like, wife beater off and all that, and then all of a sudden, a tank top, for those of you out there, a, like, guinea t-shirt, you know, whatever. Anyway, he takes that off, and then, you know, his six-pack's there, and then all of a sudden, like, all the women, like, from ages... Keep in mind, we were in high school from, like, ages 16 to 60. All all of a sudden just went, Mmm, yeah, I love those. You could carve meat on those. Yeah, women stare too. I've caught, I've caught them plenty of times. I only wish that I caught them staring at me, but that's never, that's almost never the case. To start this most Sorry. bizarre of trends, the Country Bears. Ugh. so rich they forgot to even put Jamboree in the title. This is a movie I've referenced a lot in the past, but I'll admit, have never seen all the way through. I just fast-forwarded into the Christopher Walken scenes. That's fair. And so did you. That's... The film was less than I a didn't, hit at the box but... office, got pretty torn apart by critics, and was often the punchline of jokes about unsuccessful Disney films. Knock, knock. Who's there? Country Bears. Country Bears who, exactly? It drew my attention more, though, when I saw Animaniacs writer and producer Peter Hastings directed it. This dude has had some big titles under his belt, so I figure something of value has to come out of it. And yes, I'm aware I just said something of value has to come out of the Country Bears movie. How much, you may ask? Well, let's willingly find out. Let's put on the 2002 cinematic question mark. Country Bears. The film opens trying to convince us that the Bears were a legit country band. And I'm not gonna lie, they try so hard to make it look legit, it's kind of hilarious. I'm just waiting for VH1's Behind the Music intro to play around. Oh my god, I was just thinking about that. Uh, Tennessee O'Neill on the one string thing. Like, what the- I don't- the Bears sold out countless shows to millions of confused-looking fans. Sometimes they'd even stare blankly at the stage like lifeless mannequins. But then everything changed when the Teddy Grahams Bears began touring. Fuck those guys. The Country Bears officially broke up after the 91 Hibernation Tour. Taking into account there were no bears in that audience. Many blamed human grizzly segregation. Willie Nelson, a former Country Bear himself, drew much influence. I learned a lot from those guys, and that was why I was so sad to see them break up. Now I'm just figuring out now that they were real and not a result of the wacky tobacco. See, that's the real <laughs> This little guy watching TV is Barry, voiced by Haley Joe Osmond, who nowadays could play this role without the suit. And he can't help but feel like yeah. he doesn't belong with his family. 
Mom, am I adopted? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay, I'll admit, I'd be lying if I said this kind of joke didn't always get a laugh out of me. But it could have used Steve Martin saying, You mean I'm gonna stay this color? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Maven. Freaking the jerk. Critic? Yeah? I, uh, I thought I heard you laughing. Well, yeah, I saw a funny scene. Okay. Well, you are aware that you're watching Country Bears, right? For God's sakes, I'm giving this movie a fair shot, even if it is Country Bears. <laughs> okay. I know, you're totally fine in there, Critic. You're totally... That's a lie, and I need you to get here as soon as possible. Oh, blue. Oh, blue. Blue. Barry has to deal with his early 2000s brother Dex, who I swear are all oh my. from a restore. Yes! Barry. Yeah, they're and like, oh the my god. I didn't put that together. Even if you were a Steven dog, Tobolowsky. We would love you as much as we love Dexter. Maybe more. He's right there! He does get a pretty funny comeback scene, though. Wow, really? And did you know that nobody cares? That face is hilarious. As if his father is thinking, My God, he stopped me with a spoon. I can no longer control him. It's legit funny. I'm fine! <laughs> Which escalate pretty fast when Dex comes in and reveals that he's adopted and Barry decides to run away. Like, just within a few minutes. Don't worry, though. Emotional pacing is as important in this film as getting that psychotic face of death off Barry's mug. <laughs> I didn't know both eyes could twitch. I think I referenced the lack of emotion in this film as a bad thing, but to the film's credit, it knows not to waste time on stuff like this. It's aware that a lot of people watching are simply tuning in to see how goddamn crazy it gets. And brother, they deliver on that fast! Enter Christopher Walken as Reed Thimple, an evil businessman who wants to tear down their hall. And I swear to God, I have never seen Christopher Walken act so serious. He actually seems more comfortable acting with animatronic bears than he does real people. Six years, $20,000. Must be tough. Do you like the sound of crunching wood? I do. I'm sorry, he brings his A game to this. Which he is unbelievable. How to, give, how to give it and how to make it funny. 25 cents. You have changed for a hundred. I thought you weren't coming back until you could tear the place down. That's a whole four days away, Henry. <laughs> oh, like that's gonna help. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the whole movie came out of his head. All right, Mr. Walken, we're all set to film the origin story of Hannah Montana. I want bears. What? Bears. Bears. You mean like Hannah goes to the zoo? Or... Half the cast should be bears. Well, I don't think that matches Hannah Montana. Buddy, I'm not budging on the bear thing. Well, your contract says... My contract says I own Disney now. What? My God, it does. How did that happen? I have ways. And you'll notice you won't get control back until a bear movie is made with me in it. Well, I guess we have no choice in the matter. Singing bears. Uh-huh. With hats. I like hats. Meanwhile, Barry's family calls the police to see if they can find him. I thought you officers might enjoy a little nibble of something. Uh, damn. Please help yourself. What do I even say sometimes? It's so odd and random, you feel like you have no choice but to laugh. Like being cornered uh -huh. by Steven Seagal in clown makeup. You laugh out loud because you feel like there's no, no other option. No, I'd kill it with fire. <laughs> Meanwhile, Barry sees Bear Hall is about to be closed down. Oh, I mean, destroyed in big cartoony letters. As he looks over with the owner of the place, Destroy. how great it used to be. Jimi Hendrix opened here for Vanilla Fudge, but nobody, but nobody was like the country bears. He was sitting everywhere, even up in the rafters. Now it's all Splash Mountain dubstep and teacup wrappers. I belong here. Mumble How rappers. Can you save this place? Nah. And we can do it with a concert uh, to raise the money. Nah. We can get the band back together. Well, that's just insane. You know, half of them joined the Rock of Fire explosion. <laughs> that's the stupidest thing. A Bearhorn Lakehorn can't help but remember the good old days. Well, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say what? Man, we hosted everybody here. 
Chipmunks, power line, they're coming out of their shells to her, and so many Christian bands. If we're gonna get the mm. band back together, we're gonna need some transportation. He then agrees to uh, get the did, band did you, back together. Did you, did you get the dream junkies? Five. As they pull their old touring bus out of storage. Huh. I've been sleeping in there for years! Who's president? Donald Trump. No, really, who's president? The movie senses parents want to get home, so it fast forwards to get the bears to their destination faster. Excuse me? Sorry, gotta be part of the video shoot. I kinda am the video shoot. Wow! They got... Crystal Harris! Singer! You're Fred Betterhead? Fred from the Country Bears. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm Nicolas Cage in a bear suit looking for a <laughs> <running the> punch. <laughs> waka waka, pal. <laughs> <sighs> I'm in a 12-step program to get over it. Speaking of banding together to get through something, this Woo! musical moment starts. Comes out of nowhere, and it's... and it's... Back, they had to do 50 retakes because all the people with instruments kept hissing their pants with laughter, trying to keep a straight face around Earl Sinclair covered in hairy mold. But seeing the final product, you wouldn't think that. You would know that. Yeah. You know, people never tell you this is what Shelley Duvall continued to see in the bear scene from The Shining. Oh. Oh my god. Oh god, <laughs> run. They run for your life. Band, but Fred wonders how they're gonna get people to the show. Why don't you go rip Holland, Hen? Rip Holland? The guy who stole the band from me? Ah, uh, call Rip. Yeah. Rip Holland. Uh, Rip? I want to do one of those funny things, like, you ever watch F Troop and Agron's like, there's no way I'm wearing that dress, and Forrest Tucker's like, you're wearing that dress, and Agron's like, no way, no how, there's no way I'm wearing that dress, and then they wipe, and Agron's wearing a dress. <laughs> Yo! He asks Rip Damn if it. he can set up a show at Bear Hall, and Rip's response is the same Jason Momoa's wife tells him every night. Well, it's gonna be a squeeze, but I think a little juggling, I can fit it in. And as lame as that lead into him picking up the phone is, it is followed by a very funny joke. I am so back, baby! Excuse me, sir. This is the last time I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have to leave the store. Yeah, right, my guy needs you. <laughs> you know, this okay. movie can actually- That skit right there could actually work if it wasn't in this fucking movie! It could work! That's legit, it could be funny. Ugh. Oh. Actually get a few genuine laughs out of me. What? Critic, did we hear you laughing at Country Bears? Oh, yes, I laughed at Country Bears. You see, he's mad. <laughs> Camera. Critic, you're not well. You need medical attention immediately. Oh, piss off. Ah, uh, come on, Critic. You have some sort of shocky thing for you. What does it do? I don't know. Shocky stuff. No, screw you guys. I'm going <laughs> to like whatever I like in this, and none of you can stop me. Damn it, Jim. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, he's got us. Let's get out of here. Wait, 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 hold on a second. I can't let you leave when there's a man watching country bears in there. This calls for drastic action. I wonder what she's gonna do. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't have anything. I was just walking away to think. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes, so the mayor is trying ways. to get everyone together to do the show by Saturday. Boy, somebody hired Billy McFarland to plan this. As Barry looks over their <sighs> past competitions and notices one of the acts that lost. He was a bad loser. <laughs> First I lose to Jabber John, the Neptunes, now this. Go back to bear country! Damn. Bob Walken comes back to be the most committed he's ever been since Deer Hunter. Rip Holland, who promoted. Rip Holland. Uh, come here. You see? Look at that reaction. You know, it's like it finally hit him. My God. Bears. Don't let them catch on and you figured it out. Paul. I still, for the life of me, don't know what he said there. Paul. You could replace it with a duck quacking and make as much sense. <laughs> the bears go to the Swarmin' Hive Honey Club where, you guessed it, they only serve honey. And it's weirdly populated by both bears and people. I just assume this is euthanasia for diabetics. Excuse me, miss. 
when you're good to Mama Bear. Mama Bear's good hey, to Hey, Queen you. Latifah, what's up, homie? They go to pick up a member of the band named Zeb, but it turns out he owes money to Queen Bee Latifah here. Oh, I do hope this can be solved with annoying music. Zeb Zuba owes me a whole heap of money. Well, his little friend there has proposed a wager. My house band versus Zeb's fiddle, a little musical duo. I think the bar's accountant is shitting himself, but continue. He wins, he owes me nothing. But if he loses, I get to keep the country bear tour bus. As a reward or punishment? Yes. So I guess it's a country rap battle of sorts as the two musicians dish out insults. All right, um, I've been to I've I've witnessed some head cutting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, what that is that's literally what they call them. Do like you cut heads back in the day, uh, and I witnessed one kid literally get ran off the stage. It was bad because this guy showed up full rig, like full stacks and everything. You know, trying to act cool and everything. He busted out like. Uh, Smoke on the Water, and uh, I think, uh, what was the other one? Uh, oh yeah, Iron Man. But then, uh, other guy comes out, and he had a pretty good setup. It was a little meager, like, little mic, or little, uh, little, uh, setup. Uh, it was about, uh, yeah, it was a 212, I think. It was, he had a Fender 212. And, uh, all of a sudden, this guy started playing Eddie Van Halen's Eruption. For the life of me, the 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 jaws of the crowd were agape, like, and everyone else, like, at, the kid who had like the great setup and everything, he just like he just like unplugged and walked off the stage as soon as like uh, the finger tapping section started. <laughs> he was just like, "That's I I'm done. I'm done. My parents bought me all this nice shit, and this is the best I can do." Might I recommend not pissing off the bear? I mean, he is still a, a bear. bear. I feel like any second this is gonna end with. <laughs> but Zeb ends up winning, though I'm not entirely sure who judged. And we cut to Christopher walking in his office. <laughs> but this is what he does ten minutes before every shoot. Oh God, he's. Uh, <laughs> He's in the no pants gang. Uh, Mr. Walken, you were supposed to just say a line into the phone. What's with the missing pants, bunny slippers, and. Is that an anvil? Did you bring an anvil to this? Oh, no! Country Bell has been crushed. Uh, are you doing that again? Are you really doing that all again? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! You know what? Just roll. I'm sure we can use it for something. Doing great, Chris! Doing great! Oh no! The stories were true. Balls of Fury was supposed to be a drama. Got your bell has been crushed! The pair's go to pick it. up another member named Tennessee, who's become an emotionally unbalanced marriage counselor. And yes, that is as hauntingly surreal as it sounds. I mean, what do you think? Well, what do I think? I think you two so dying lucky to have each other. Yep. How can nobody laugh at this? Uh, it is just so unjustifiably insane. Yeah. He gets even stranger when he has a mental breakdown over his lost love, who he still keeps pictures of. This is just so uncomfortably cuckoo. Not like me, not like me, Pritchie. Oh, I lost her, Pritchie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. What did I even say to such madness? You can call it exactly that. Madness! What are you guys doing in here? It took us a long time to lock it through the door. It was unlocked. Regardless. <laughs> we are gonna take you away from anguish. Away from despair. Away from country bears! Chucky thing ready? Chuck, chuck, chuck! Okay, look, I enjoy the film ironically. The same way I would enjoy The, the Room or Birdemic. Then you acknowledge there's nothing legitimately funny in this. Not one laugh was for the intended purpose. I know the part he's going to talk. I know the part he's going to actually laugh at. I know it. I know it because I think I saw an old list 
of like most like like Christopher Walken like most Christopher Walken Christopher Walken moments back in the day. I think I know the part. This isn't over. I mean, that one bit of enjoyment indicated that the filmmakers knew what they were doing. Look, I'm getting away. Stop him! I know that this is wrong. I know. I just, I gotta figure this out. Critic, there's only one way to figure this out. Patience, love, and shocky things. Just leave me alone. I gotta go through this myself. Critic! No! Critic! Shut up, camera! you think of when you hear Dollar Shave Club is probably this. That's disturbing, critic. Yes, you are, but that's Doug. not what it is at all. What's wrong with you? Dollar Shave Club is a great <laughs> service that okay. delivers great razors to your house. We all have our everyday grooming routines, from showering to brushing our teeth, and yes, shaving. For example, I always shave my head, as well as other things. Doug! Just because that's not what Dollar Shave Club is doesn't mean I still can't enjoy it. No matter your routine, Dollar Shave Club has everything I don't you judge. need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. A lot of people who heard of Dollar Shave Club Sheesh. probably think they just do razors, but Friggin that's not true. Patreon is Dollar not Shave letting Club up. Dollar Shave Club can solve all your grooming needs in one box. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes. I will never get tired of saying that. But and obviously wipes. shaving products. Basically, if you have a body, they have you covered. Not only do they ship them right to your house, but the more you buy, the more you save. They call it their handsome discount. And now's the time to see how amazing and high quality their products are. Because right now they have a great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter kit, each just for five bucks. They sent me all three of their starter sets. Check it out. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter. The oral care starter set comes with their weighty toothbrush and a trial sized version of their toothpaste. And the shower starter set comes with three trial sized versions of their amber lavender body cleanser, citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, and sage and black pepper shampoo. I'm not gonna lie, the razors are my favorite product, but if I had to choose one that wasn't a razor, it's gotta be the body cleanser, because it smells so freaking good. Especially when I use it on the money I shave. Especially for my $2 shave club. <laughs> Take a guess how much that's worth. 200 pennies! This ad was weird, but the deal is not. Join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the Restock Box ships regular sized products at regular price. Just click the link below. The Dollar Shave Club. A great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your home. Huh. Dollar Shave Club. So they add Tennessee to the group and make their way to a nearby restaurant. Oh my gosh. You're the country bears. Well, gave it away. And I'm taken. I'm still working on it. If you're wondering why this waitress can't act, by the way, it's because it's Jennifer Page. Far better at singing convincingly than speaking convincingly. Oh, oh my gosh. You're the country bears. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice like that. You guys inspired me to go after my dream become a famous singer. Did you make it? Well, I'm in this movie, so... Nope. nope. She gets a chance to show off her singing chops, and while the musical segments in this aren't awful, they are pretty boring. I feel like the funny awkwardness of this movie comes from how seriously the bears are taken. But in musical numbers, it's kind of expected you're supposed to act a little silly, so it's not quite as much fun. Though I suppose it is a little humorous if you really analyze it. I always bring my guitar to the kitchen. We thought these were our kills. We're really old. This is when the manager comes in like fired, 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 animal hazard. <laughs> but on the news, 
Tuesday notice, a very weird newscaster. This man is involved in the abduction of this 10-year-old boy in this bus. We'll keep you updated on Bus Watch. I wish I could live my life with the same excitement he uses to say Bus Watch. Bus Watch! Actually, that guy looks familiar. Oh, of course! He's the dude with the viral dog. He could really do cartoons. Wait. Swatch. Actually, that guy was. Is it the same guy? Familiar. Oh, of course. He's the dude with the viral dog. He's really? really is that really him? I need to know. Show up and chase them down. The chase itself isn't anything special, but I am loving more and more how they'll randomly put bears in the background. Like they really want to do some universe building where bears get employment. They need to pay the bills. They have lives to live. The more I see them, the more I start laughing. It's just such a peculiar detail. They live them in the car wash, and again, just the weird acting from these two makes this already odd scene even odder. I can't see him. I can't see him. Can you see him? We're watching a movie. Do you see? We're watching a movie. We're watching a movie. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. There's a movie, right? Yeah, you're watching a movie. Are you sure? One of them loses his fake mustache, which is never addressed as to why he wore it. And as a visual gag, this gets a bit of a chuckle out of me. Your hair looks ridiculous. So he does kind of look like a Medusa head from Castlevania. Kind of, yeah. The bears stay at a hotel and discover Tennessee's old girlfriend is singing there. So they go to- Whoa! Button your shirt, lady! There's children present! I just want to show my bare necessities. Hi-oh! Damn it! Jess Harnell, the Shut up, Ed McMahon. Warner, is supposed to be somewhere in this bar. Let's see if we can figure out where he is. This next song was written by an old friend of mine in a band called the Country Bears. Woohoo! Bears rock! Oh, God. This movie's amazing. Even this musical number, which I just said before I don't really get into in this film, is freaking hilarious because they play it so straight. If somebody told you this was a Spike Jones music video, you'd call it genius. I especially love this one woman who just looks like she's in hell. All the other extras are trying to get into it, but she's just having none of this shit. Every motion she has is like, Chill me, chill me, chill me, chill me, yeah, she's me, shaking chill the me. tambourine. Fun fact, by the way, that's Bonnie Raitt and Don Healy. The actual singers of this song yeah. are right now. Bonnie Raitt, killer guitar player as well. Hell of a slide guitar player. Don Henley, you know, what can be said? The Eagles. They seem way too okay for their voices to be coming out of Yogi and Cindy Bear. They're great. They're always great. Better than the Eagles. Yes, in no. Universe, they're literally Eagles. No. No, they they're not better the than the Eagles. The band, but accidentally get the wrong house. Which country music cameo did you blackmail this time? Elton John? What? That country music icon. Can I help you? Yeah, an apology for Hakuna Matata. That guy looks a lot like Elton John. Nah, nothing's just taller. Ah, I need to pick my movies better. I'm sure things will improve when I go to Kingsman 2. They go to a no. wedding where the final member seems to be schmoozing with the rich, but they later find out he's just the wedding singer. Nevertheless, he still doesn't want to play with them. I'm not going. Your family. And you're going. Damn. That was knocked the fuck out. Awesome. You got knocked the fuck out! They're so happy-go-lucky most of the time. It's so weird to see one of them get bear punched to the ground. You can see that as the crime photo in a newspaper. Bear dead at West. Bears get into an argument about why the band broke up to begin with, and Barry, I guess just now realizes he should go back home. Resulting in this beautifully, awkwardly staged moment. My dad. I need to go home. <laughs> okay. So I really have to give credit to the animatronics and the puppeteering in this. It really is first rate. It's amazing the range of expression and movement these costumes emote. It's very well done. Yes. But this is the one scene where everybody looks completely lost. The people inside, the puppeteers operating the faces, the cinematographer. Nobody looks like they know what they're supposed to be doing right now. That was like visual dead air. You can practically hear the people inside the suits talking. 
My dad. Oh, um, mine. Line? Do I have a line? Oh, I didn't have a line. Shut up! Shut up! Shit! 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 Film it if you want! So Perry goes home. Kind of out of nowhere, but again, emotional arcs aren't really this film's focus. What is the film's focus is working on even stranger questions. Like, Perry listens to Nine Inch Nails? What? Why not? I listened to Nine Inch Nails when I was a kid. You know what? That answers a lot of questions. That actually answers a lot of questions as to why I'm kind of fucked in the head. Anyway. What? Not only does this not match the music he listens to, not only does it not tie into the kind of character he is, though, God forbid, that'd be really cool and hilarious, but now we have to acknowledge that Disney officially has nine inch nails in one of their properties. And it's the freaking country bears! There's what I find more... Okay, Doug. Nine Inch Nails is one thing? This kid has two posters of Limp Biscuit in the background. He's got Significant Other right here and Chocolate Starfish right here. Oh my god. <laughs> I find that more disturbing than fucking Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails in one of their properties. And it's the freaking Country Bears. There is no category for this kind of bonkers. Despite Barry reconnecting with his adoptive family and his new family, it looks like Walken has kidnapped the other bears, as shown by this WTF edit. It was that thimble fella. <laughs> oh my god, I have no idea what this movie is doing, but god help me, it's making me laugh. It's making me laugh! Walken puts them all in a cage, with of course a touch of his natural walkening. Thimble, what are you waiting for? I'm definitely changing back. Oh, cool. Never die, Chris, never die. Please As don't. the family tries to go and save them, but can't fit the bear into the car. Well, what the hell were they gonna do when Barry got older? Ah! This better not be used for a screwball situation and or wacky climax. Yes. Walken finally reveals who he is, the kid who lost years ago in the talent show. A weird and rather weak twist, but let's be honest, this was just an excuse to get Christopher Walken to do this. write a whole movie to get him to do it. Just like, ask him what the definition of car is and he'll just do that. Since that day, I'm plotting my revenge. I love the fact that there's five grown bears, all bigger than walking, yet none of them wants to take him on. Because let's be honest, even an MMA fighter wouldn't want to go up against walking this crazy. <laughs> The rest of the family, of yeah, course, up. I think Christopher Walken could have taken on anyone. Up, risking their lives it, so that this crazy shit climax can be filmed. What if something went wrong? What if a stuntman died? You know, actually, there was a there was a a movie, a shitty movie, by the way, uh, called uh, Gone Fishing, and uh, a stunt woman died during that, and that's actually why it took so long for the film to come out, and. Yeah, that's actually something that did happen. Someone died making a shitty film, and that's that. I mean, hell, it it happens more often than you think. Hell, the Allman Brothers band, uh, uh, their biopic that was coming out, they actually were filming it, and then they they didn't get proper clearance to film, and a train came through, and... A piece of the gurney that they had for the thing, uh, for the scene, flew up and it knocked this girl onto the track in front of the train and she was killed. And this girl was just getting started into film. And she wasn't even a stunt coordinator or anything like that. She was just a, uh, she was a gaffer, I believe. And shit happens, man. I mean, it... Creating a safe work environment for film, especially for stuff like that, where there's something that can go wrong very easily like that, there's a, it deserves more recognition than what it gets. He would have taken his last breath in a bear suit filming the exciting conclusion of the Country Bears movie. That would be on his tombstone. Some people should get Oscars. Get on it! Yes! They make it to Country Bear Hall. Yes! It looks like no one showed up because their agent made a deal with Walken and didn't promote them. Rip! Oh, really? What? I, not me. 
and just look at this face Walken makes. Even for him, this is channeling a different galaxy. Hey, guy, long time, looking good. Henry, you working out? It's like he's reliving a past life of an orangutan. <laughs> Gigantopithecus, come on. But they find out Big Al advertised the show himself and all the people were waiting in the back. This, of course, leads to the line that brought a torn nation together. This is not over! Yes! Oh, every time he says that line... A this isn't over! Born. Bears! They, of course, play to the crowd, even let Barry rock his guitar, and everyone is super excited. That's the one string thing. Except this guy. He... he's just not into it. Yeah, I'm Captain Hero! Yeah, I'm Hogarth! God damn it, that's slightly cooler! Yeah. I think that's the sound Haley Joe made when he found out what movie he was recording for. <laughs> well, at least they're still better than Maroon 5. That's a fact! And that was The Country Bears, in all honest to God seriousness? I kind of had a fun time with it. Oh, God! Ha <laughs> ha! We used our shocky thing to get in. It's still unlocked. Save him! Ah! Ah! Run, Doug! Run! Ah! Oh. This is what we do to people who like the country bears. Is it? I don't know. No one's ever admitted to liking it before. Wait! Can I, like, explain myself? I guess, but we're still gonna shock your testicles occasionally for good measure. Yeah, that's fair. Country Bears. Oh! It's not an especially well-written movie, and you could argue does even less with the idea than the already small amount that was presented. Yeah. Occasionally, oh! there's a joke that works, but for the most part, it's relatively dated humor. Where it does succeed is in how random, strange, and unbalanced it is. For most films, oh! being unbalanced is a bad thing, but for this, the tone is so inconsistent that you have no idea if they're gonna go for a laugh or a serious moment. And whichever they choose, it's always hilariously bizarre. It feels like they're just trying anything. Any weird performance, any odd line, any freaking kooky way of shooting a scene. And that surprisingly makes it a lot of fun to watch. I have no idea what the comedic intent of this movie was. Maybe it was all meant to be laughed at, or maybe it wasn't. But I can say I smiled throughout the whole thing because the humor isn't in the intentional jokes in the foreground, but rather the unintentional jokes in the background. The extras, the crazy line reads, the constant questioning of how and why things are happening. If you go into this movie constantly asking why to everything, any answer you come up with will be hilarious. It's like a zen joke. It just asks you the right questions and you fill in the answers to get the humor. So yeah, I'm weirdly recommend it. I'm kind of hoping it becomes one of those movies that people look back on and say, what the hell were they thinking? But kind of in a loving way. A way that appreciates the energy, the spontaneity, the strangeness, and all around fun. I'm not entirely sure what this movie was aiming for, but it entertained me and made me laugh. And for a freaking Country Bears movie to do that, no matter what the intent, that is quite <laughs> an accomplishment. Hmm. I guess it does make a little more sense when he puts it like that. My balls don't thank you for your understanding. Yeah, I guess we can let this one go. Well, are you insane? Next he'll be saying that he likes the never-ending story. Wait. You didn't like the never-ending story? It's a never-ending story! Ah! <laughs> drawn out and boring, and I'm gonna go this way now. Run, Tamara! I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and there are some stranger things than liking the Country Bears movie. Uh, let me just figure out how to get this unlocked! Woo! The not many. This is true. Oh no! Country Bear Hall has been crushed! This isn't over! Bears! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing the Guide Dog Foundation. The Guide Dog Foundation welcomes people who are blind. I legit, okay, I legit thought uh, he said uh, Guy Dog. Like, Guy. Like, like there was a guy who, there, there's a foundation that, that deals with people who like to dress up like dogs. I. 
My brain, my brain is weird, y'all. That's that's I. That's all I can say. I can't explain it. My brain is just weird. Oh God. So yeah, the country bears. This thing. I say that with the utmost respect to anyone who likes this film. You know, in any way, I. I mm. So I can't I can't bring myself to like this film. I don't know if I if I don't know if I There's parts of this I I could laugh at if it were in a different context or in a different film with a different setup. I don't know, but all I know is that Yes!